Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thank you for joining me today. In this segment, I want to discuss with you the developments in the medical industrial complex and how the system and the grid of medicine in the United States is being increasingly weaponized against conservatives. So I could go a lot of different ways with this one, but in my life and as a nurse over really more than a decade worth of being a nurse, I've seen some changes that have been just astounding to me and I want to share them with you. So when I first got started out in nursing in the mid-2000s, the world was changing very rapidly. Uh, and I was a nurse before Obama came into office. And I saw, particularly once he got into office and the Affordable Care Act started to get moved through, a lot of the people that I worked with at the time were very much in support of socialized medicine, and these are other healthcare providers. Now granted, I've lived in a conservative part of the country, and so I think that that mixture is quite different than other parts of the country. But healthcare itself, you have to understand, and this is kind of like an insider's view on it, healthcare itself is staffed and comprised by a large number of people who are empathically driven, and not so much logically driven. People who are empathic and highly empathic people, meaning people who feel other people's pain and as a consequence are able to anticipate needs, they tend to get taken advantage of in life quite a lot because they're exceptionally naive in many, many cases. The flip side is there are other aspects of nursing, particularly in frontline nursing, like for instance in ER places, etc., where in order to get through your day, you have to carve out the empathy and throw it away. Also, psych nursing will do this too. You have to carve it out and throw it away. And so as a result of it, you get people who are on one end of the extreme. They are either highly empathic people that are exceptionally naive or on the far end of it, they've been so damaged and emotionally gutted by having to do this work that frankly people were never meant to make a career of for all these years that they have become rather fatalistic about certain things. And so it's very easy to get sucked into this as a nurse um, in various different areas that I've worked. You know, that challenge is always there. You have to be very, very self-aware working as a nurse and really any frontline healthcare professional, EMTs, paramedics, etc. I mean, y'all know this for sure, that when you're constantly dealing with people on the worst days of their lives, that can you can't not have that rubbed off on you. So you have to understand that these changes that have come about in healthcare, they've come about for various different reasons, but the core person that's going into healthcare has historically been someone who is highly empathic or uh, particularly in the case of advanced practitioners, very, very methodical and very science-oriented, science-driven. What I started noticing after after Obama got in office, and you could say that this was reflected in the political climate, or maybe it was a consequence thereof, that different types of people started going into medicine. People who are primarily motivated by the financial reward to be reaped, which I've never seen <laughs> as a nurse. Like, I don't know where these, like, great, these great dollar per hour wages come from, um, because in my area, of the country, like where I worked as a nurse, the wages have been stagnant for many different reasons for, for quite a long time. But you started to see that people started going into nursing and people started going into the medical industrial complex over the past 20 years, really, because of wanting to find basically job security and having a perennial source of relatively stable income not from a beneficent standpoint. So they weren't highly motivated by empathy, they were highly motivated by financial reasons, which isn't bad in and of itself. But what has happened, I think, is that over the past 15, 20 years, and definitely over the past 10, I've seen people go into healthcare who are there just to punch the time card, just to pay the bills, just to pay the mortgage, just to pay the cars, and the moral compass is not as keenly developed. Now this could also be a generational thing um, because I've interacted with people for whom the exact opposite was the case. But it's very important, and the reason why I'm developing this a little bit and taking my time with this is you need to understand as someone who's looking from the outside in, regardless of if you are a healthcare provider or you have family who are, or you are just 
a non-healthcare person looking in at a system that you may be potentially forced to consume at a critical and vulnerable point in your life. The people that are staffing the medical industrial complex in the United States nowadays are heavily influenced by the generational factors associated with an upbringing with less face time, less place, less play time, face to face human play time, which manifests with a deficit in empathy. And it also manifests with an increase in gutted narcissistic characteristics. Not exactly what you want going into the healthcare field. Now, again, I say this with the obvious caveat that not everybody is like this in the healthcare world, but there's enough of them. And this trend is troubling enough to me that I'm actually making a video about it. As we have seen the Rona come into everybody's lives over the past year and a half, it's been astonishing to me just how much vitriol and how much forced compliance has been supported and shoved out of the healthcare industry by people who are healthcare providers. And when I'm talking about vitriol, I'm talking about we need to take people's children from them if they don't make them roll up their sleeves. We need to force people to have a healthcare intervention in order to come back. The wide adaptation and the, the, the subsidization of force and of mandating that government get involved in people's health care is sickening to me. And the fact that there are major accounts, major social media accounts with health care providers whose sole purpose in life is to ruin the lives of other health care providers whom they have a difference of opinion with, with whom they have a difference of opinion, or whose advocacy doesn't walk lockstep in line with their medical bullet bureau. That is very troubling to me. It's troubling because this industry, the healthcare industry is operating on a fundamental currency of trust, the trust of our patients and clients, whatever the official, that was the big thing, you know, 10, 15 years ago, they're not patients, they're clients. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, at this point, many of them are, are in our care, not because they have elected to, not because there was a competition and a value assessment made before choosing to participate in our services. They're there because they're vulnerable. So I would call that a patient, which means that because there's a deficit of power, we have an obligation then to hold these things loosely, to hold our own desires in the way that we think things should best be approached loosely and prize instead the right of the patient to advocate for their own desires and the right of a patient to either accept or reject our advice. And that's not something that people who are power tripping like to hear. That's not something that people who like that power deficit want here. So we talked about people going into the healthcare industry because they're highly empathic, but there's also the flip side is that uh, the flip side of empaths would be narcissists, in my opinion. You got a lot of people who are going into healthcare now more than just for financial reasons, but because they like power, they salivate over it. And women in particular who like to manipulate are really primed to go into this. Men, I have known some men who are absolute jerks who are in healthcare too, uh, and not just higher healthcare providers. I'm, I'm talking like mid-level healthcare providers. But there is also this subset of people you have to understand who are going into healthcare now because they love control. They salivate over it. And where is this coming from? They didn't have control over something in their life early on. So they're going to get it back. They're going to capture it back. They're going to get their way one way or another. And if it means taking your child away from you or reporting you to CPS because you didn't do what they said you should do, they don't have any compunction about it. They're going to do it because they're going to get back at daddy. They're going to get back at mommy they're gonna get back at whoever it is that robbed them of choice in their life and made them miserable so they just end up perpetuating this cycle and it's a very visceral very sick and twisted way of doing things but I'm telling you these people exist now right about now is when people are like holy cow like Patriot nurse Jeepers I mean have you had some kind of like vastly negative experience with people like what about the credo like what what about your, your duty to elevate you know the Florence Nightingale thing your duty to elevate the profession you know what the way that I view my oath the Florence Nightingale oath in order for me 
to elevate my profession, that means calling it out if there's a problem. And in the United States and nursing and in the healthcare industrial, the medical industrial complex over the past 15 to 20 years, there has been a rise that is either the exception to or the parallel of the rise in sociopathy in our nation of people thinking that it's their bound duty to criticize and control other people and to force their will upon people. And if their patients, their clients, whoever won't take their advice, that they're going to get the government involved. That big daddy government, the writer of all wrongs, the father that was never there for them, the boyfriend that actually did what they wanted to every now and then. Like this is how they view government. There is a subset of people who are involved in the medical industrial complex who are sociopaths. And unfortunately, because of the way that politics has moved over the past 15 to 20 years, they have more and more power to mess with people's lives now in ways that they didn't previously. And so the reason why I'm bringing this up is to advocate for people to be self-sufficient as best as possible. And I know that people are going to say, oh, Patriot Nurse, you have a vested interest in doing this because you sell classes or whatever. Yeah, I sell classes because I want people to be equipped and trained. But I don't care if you train with me. I'd like for you to train with me because I believe in my classes. But even if it's not with me, even if it's with a different modality or a different provider, someone else, I want people to get trained and to be self-sufficient as best as possible. Because for those of you who have ever studied history, particularly how the medical industrial complex was used in, for instance, Nazi Germany, just because someone has a profession in healthcare, a white coat, that does not make them a good person. Let me plead with you to understand that. Just because someone is a nurse or a doctor or an EMT or a paramedic or whatever it is, that does not make them a good person. That does not make them an empathetic person. That doesn't make them a kind person, a beneficent person, a good person. That makes them partially operating in that sphere. Nowadays, we've gotten to the point where it seems to be particularly as of late that you have primarily political individuals with the subtext of having medical licenses or degrees. That's a very, very dangerous place to be. So as these days go on and as we are looking forward into the future, where now you have these alphabet soup organizations that are advocating that we as healthcare providers abuse, and that's what it is, abuse our positions to gather information that is heavily politically motivated. I'm talking about the American Academy of Pediatrics and a lot of these other groups that are advocating, asking for how many firearms are in the house on intake forms for pediatric patients or like any patient. Like, do you have access to firearms? Do your mommy and daddy have access to firearms? How many guns are in the home? This is politicized Nazism in the healthcare industry. The same tactics that these guys used are being slowly, slowly integrated into the baseline operating platform for healthcare professionals now. So it is in our best interest. And I say this like because I got a lot of nurses and, and EMTs, paramedics, even doctors, dentists who watch me. We need to be advocating that our patients start to educate themselves. I mean, as a nurse, this is the thing that they tell you, oh, you got to advocate for your patient. Listen, I'm advocating for patients at this point. Let me encourage you if you're also a healthcare provider. We need to be advocating at the next level for our patients. Instead of having this, oh, I'm advocating for them by ratting out their family, how many firearms are. We advocate for our patients by encouraging them to need us less. <laughs> we encourage them to be skilled in assessment, to be skilled in alternative modalities of caring for people, to be skilled in ways of ba basically being doctor mom. We need to basically educate our patients out of needing us. Educating ourselves into joblessness is just kind of a weird way to think about it, but that's the right thing to do. The way that we advocate for our patients is to be honest about the situation around us in the healthcare industry. And if you are a person who values the rights of man, who values liberty and individual sovereignty, self-sufficiency, 
encouraging people to train themselves out of needing us is very important right now, particularly if you're conservative, particularly if you value freedom and limited government. The best way to avoid these people getting into your life is to not go into their grid in the first place. Now, obviously, I would encourage you, if you're in need of life-saving care, of course, don't not go to the ER because you're concerned about something. But anything that you can do, anything that we can advocate our patients to do at this point that decreases their overall exposure into this grid is going to help our ratios as healthcare providers. It's going to help our patients be better and less sick in the long term. And we're going to be transforming sick care into health care, which is really what we should be doing in the first place. Health promotion is the bedrock of patient advocacy. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that was helpful for you. It's just a little bit of, of a rant, but truthfully, I think it's needed because I'm telling you that the quality of healthcare providers in this country is going down significantly. The increase in sociopathy pan-systemically is on its, I mean, it can't even be argued at this point anymore because of broken homes, because of screen time, because of lack of, of play, whatever the reason is. The fact and the manifestation of it is irrefutable. So I don't want to be putting myself in a situation of vulnerability with people whose empathy I don't trust and certainly who have been weaponized against me and my values. I hope it was helpful for you all today. If you enjoyed the video, I hope you'll subscribe to me here on YouTube, Patriot Nurse. You can also support me on Patreon, subscribe to our cryptocurrency and PayPal. I'll have links below. You want to train with me? I got two options. Four hours online, it's $129, thepatriotnurseacademy.com. You want to train in person with me, my live training events? I've got two and four day offerings. The two day offerings I've got in Indianapolis, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Knoxville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Philadelphia, but also I have the four-day classes. And the four-day classes, the next one is in Knoxville, Tennessee, but also I've got Salt Lake City coming up uh, in, in November, that is. And it's a Monday through Thursday class. Guys, whoever it is that you choose to train with, let me encourage you to do so. Because considering the path and trajectory of things and the cyclical and repeatable nature of history, I think it's pretty safe to say that we're in a place right now that's not advantageous to freedom seeking and freedom loving people. I hope you have a wonderful week. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off and I'll see y'all later. Bye.